Hello and welcome back to the channel. Summer is coming up fast, so it's time to do another trip summary. Today's journey will be the long haul journey from the legislature terminus in downtown Victoria all the way to Surrey Central Station. We will start in Victoria, take Route 7072 to Swartz Bay, kick back on the ferry ride to Tawasson, and then take a couple more buses to Scott Road Station, and then take a Sky Train two stops to Surrey Central. I actually have individual videos of all components of this journey on this channel, but I think it would be a good idea to do a walkthrough of this trip. If you like transit related content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's begin. Now I'm not going to spend too much time doing a historical rundown of these routes as it's very complex, but these regional services have long been staples for foot passengers for a long time now, and these services were actually not run by public transportation companies, but rather by private coach operators such as Pacific Coach Lines. That said, in 1975, we kind of started to see this transition from long distance bus operators to public transit, and that started with Route 640 beginning its ferry terminal services in 1975. By 2004, the bus service to Tawas Ferry was replaced by the 620 Express route into Richmond. While Surrey bound people have to transfer at Ladner now, there were plans made in 2017 to put a new express route between Scott Road and the ferry terminal. These days, double decker buses without luggage racks meet passengers at either end of the ferry route. Now, onto the ride review. We start at Legislature Terminus for this video. I just wrapped up the day of getting bus videos for the channel, so now it's time to head back to Metro Vancouver. Heading from downtown Victoria to Swartz Bay can be done in a couple ways. The main goal here is to meet the seasonal 7pm ferry. I'm doing the slower run on the 72 just because I was really tired when filming this video. But if you're looking for more info on the 70, I did make a video on it, so if you're keen on specifics of that route, go ahead and watch that video. Anyways, for the fare for BC Transit buses here in Victoria, Victoria, I'm gonna go ahead and tally up $5 for a single day pass. Considering the size of Victoria compared to Vancouver, this is a really good deal. Anyways, our 72 to Swartz Bay leaves from Stop C and takes a longer route through Sanishton to reach the ferry terminal. For you Westbound folks, the 72 is basically your 250 and the 70 is essentially your 257. The route mainly uses the signature units of the Victoria bus fleet, its famous double-decker buses. In fact, Victoria is the first city in the entire continent to use production double-decker transit buses. Our first section of this journey takes 75 minutes to complete. For both the 72 and the 70 Express, the 72 usually leaves 15 minutes before the 70, but both buses will meet the exact same ferry. The town of Sydney is also on our way to the ferry terminal. For foot passengers, one extra hour early is more than enough to do some last minute exploring in this quaint little community by the seaside. We arrive at Schwartz Bay at around 6.40. For the record, the 70 Express left 15 minutes after our bus and arrived 5 minutes earlier at 6.35. Either way, that puts pressure on either route to not experience any accidents on the highway. So now we're onto the next part of this journey, the ferry back to the mainland. The departure is at 7 o'clock and the ferry tonight will be the Spirit of Vancouver Island, an S-Class ferry completed in 1994. In 2019, it's completed a refit to operate on liquefied natural gas. The crossing this evening will take around 95 minutes, so I suggest heading straight to the Coastal Cafe to beat the lineups. 
being a typical Friday evening, this sailing was rather busy. In terms of fares for foot passengers, it's $18 per head, so we'll add that to the total. Now we are at $23 spent on transportation. The weather doesn't look too great out, so I had a burger and watched some basketball inside this hidden room. So if you don't mind, here's some footage from the same trip taken sometime last summer. Enjoy! The sun has already set and now we're on to one of the more tricky parts of the journey, the evening regional connecting buses and the SkyTrain trip. The trick for the next bus is to try to beat the crowd heading to the arrival zone and the connecting 620 Fair Express. The 620 provides connections for regional passengers and caters to those heading to Richmond and the International Airport. It's crucial especially during the busy long weekends that you work your way ahead of the crowd as these buses can get very busy. On this particular sailing, I did see quite Quite a lot of passengers waiting to use the foot exit, but it turns out most of those people ended up using taxis and other private transportation. In addition, there may or may not be scheduling anomalies owing to the global driver shortages. In fact, that applies to all bus trips regardless of transit system, so do keep that in mind. Anyways, the fare to get to Surrey Central using the Translink bus system is $2.45 or $3.05 when using tap to pay and that will last us the 90 minutes to get to Surrey Central. Right now, I'll just bring the total on screen. Never pay with coins on the bus as those don't allow the crucial transfer to SkyTrain. Anyways, we get onto our articulated bus which is also found on other busy city routes. Now sometimes, Translink will send out a commuter double-decker seen on other routes like the run between White Rock and Bridgeport Station in Richmond. I think the logic here is to mimic the taller buses seen on the island. I don't know for certain the reason behind that. Anyways, the 620 runs a schedule in a way that the buses meet the ferry arrival times. So we're actually lucky here that we don't align with an inbound trip from the Nanaimo Duke point, or else we would definitely run into some crowding issues. But right now, it doesn't seem too bad as we beat the crowds and got a seat. For every ferry that comes in from Nanaimo, there are 2.5 ferries that come in from Victoria at least according to the spring schedule for BC ferries. A quick ride for three stops gets us to Ladner Exchange. This bus loop straight up fails in the lighting department. So if any city officials are watching this, it really is time for the exchange change to get better lights to make it safe at night. Thankfully, our last bus tonight comes every 20 minutes at this hour. The last bus for tonight is Route 640, a regular route which connects Ladner Exchange and Scott Road Station. After its BC Ferries responsibilities were shifted to the 620 in 2004, it has mainly connected these hubs while providing service to Delta and the Tilbury industrial area. Thankfully, it's been heavily invested into as of late for its importance in regional connections and in response to an influx of people working in the Tilbury sites. After 10 minutes of waiting, we board the bus with remaining foot passengers, as well as those who worked the closing shift at Tuasin Mills. Despite taking 36 minutes to complete, this journey up to SkyTrain goes by really fast. We get to Scott Road around 10.04. So far, we have spent well over 4 hours and 30 minutes on this journey from downtown Victoria. This last little bit on SkyTrain will take us to our final stop at Surrey Central. By the time 10pm rolls around, trains are still coming every 8 minutes, which is astounding especially when you don't have drivers. And the trains at this hour are full of people coming back from a Friday evening out downtown. Two stops on the Expo line from Platform 2 will get us to our final destination.
And there you have it. We have completed our journey from downtown Victoria to Surrey Central in just under 5 hours. First, I'm gonna pull up the grand totals for the total price. So in total, we have spent somewhere in the ballpark of $26 on transportation, and that's just one way. And that also does not include the additional $17 for that burger meal on the ferry. Now we're just gonna go over how long everything took, from getting on that first bus to getting off at Surrey Central. In total, this journey took a whopping 4 hours and 51 minutes to complete. The journey still isn't done, as you still have to make the transfer to that last connecting bus or private vehicle to get wherever you need to go. And that highlights the need for a longer fare window and for even faster options to the ferry terminal to be implemented. And like always, your ride conditions will vary greatly from what was presented in this video. So overall, a transit trip to Victoria might look like leaving Surrey Central by 7am for a 12 noon arrival on the island, spending 5 hours on the island, and then spending the next 5 hours for a 10pm arrival back at Surrey Central. Anyways, that's it for this video. I will have all the sources down in the description as well as a rough outline for the fares as well as a cheers itinerary. Again, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.